Hi, I'm Jackie Rankin. I'm a landscape photographer. I've been a landscape photographer for maybe about 10 years, but my full experience covers about 30. I now live in Queenstown with my husband and fellow EOS master, Mike Langford. We run the Queenstown Centre for Creative Photography, which means uh, we run workshops and photo safaris, so we teach as well as do commercial work. Now I'm here today to talk to you about macro photography or close-up photography. The main thing is to consider how you're going to shoot and a macro lens is really the way to go but there are other alternatives. Things to consider with your macro photography that are important. One is as you're getting closer to your subject your depth of field is going to get very small. That's where your aperture is going to be of major importance. If you have a very small aperture then you'll have a bigger depth of field and the alternative is when you have a very big aperture you're going to have a very narrow depth of field and all the different alternatives between there are worthwhile exploring and that's the great thing about this whole macro thing is that you have to experiment you have to explore and you've got to find inspiration from the act of doing because it's a different way of seeing and remember if you don't have a macro lens you can always turn your standard lens around on your camera body and you make it into a macro lens because think about it your normal lens makes the big world small so when you turn your lens around on your body it makes what's small big and it works and I'll show you how okay manual focus okay manual focus so you've got control stabilizer off not that that really matters but I can hold that on the front of here and get a sense of where I need to be in it's a matter of just then taping it on Making sure that the tape's a nice, good quality, sticky stuff. Focus on those as they go in. This brief is about macro or close-up photography with an eyedropper. It's about fluids or drops that can come out of this into things or onto things, but it's about filling the frame and getting in close. I'm going to be judging this section for images that show creativity. Something unique. I'm looking for something I haven't seen before. And I won't know how many, take, how many shots it's taken for you to get there. The main thing is that the image has to be strong. This is a photographic competition and I want to make sure that I'm judging photographs. And that's called camera craft, so I want to be able to see, know that it's come from the, the skill that you've got with your camera. Ideas come from magazines, they come from uh, maybe looking at the art gallery, looking at the impressionists, find something that excites you and then go for it. If your subject is moving you're going to need a faster shutter speed. I suggest though you keep your subject still. Then your problem is maybe your camera is going to move. So use a tripod to minimise your camera shake or alternatively or in amongst there you can actually change your ISO which is the sensitivity of the sensor to light. The higher you make your ISO the faster your shutter speed can be. Another way to minimise camera shake is to use a cable release. Click. The cable release will stop you pressing on the camera and creating a little bit of blur. If you don't have a cable release don't worry, because you can use, your, in your drive mode, you can change it to two second timer or ten second timer and then that will allow you just to, by the time you've clicked, the camera will settle down and it will make, make the exposure after two seconds, so that's a good way to go. Another thing to consider is your a polarizer. A polarizer will get rid of glare off surfaces or flare. Uh, it allows things to you to see through uh, shine. So you might be using a piece of glass or something to put the drops on. If you're getting problems with shine, a circular polarizer is going to be very handy. Live view is a really good thing to use. It shows you what you're going to get before you shoot. Your hands are off the camera. You can press the depth of field preview button and that will allow you to see that 
aperture change. As you press your finger on this button and hold it down, the camera will then close down the aperture or open up to whatever you're going to shoot at and you're able to see how much is going to stay sharp before you make the picture. I just encourage you to experiment, have fun, remember to build up your ideas one step at a time. If you're playing with inks and uh, drops that might mark the floor, don't do it inside on the carpet. Always put something down because I know I did it myself. And uh, go for it.